I'm super excited for this video because there may or may not be a hidden game that I created all the way in 2020 with an elaborate storyline that I worked pretty hard to create back in the day. But do you have boring QR codes? Let's learn in this video how to make them really cool to create something like this. First off, you'd need to know where to download your QR codes from or create your QR codes. There are various websites online. However, one that I found that works perfect for me is qrcode-monkey.com. I'll have the link in the description. The reason why we're using this particular website is because you can download it as an SVG. So first you have to actually paste your URL or if you want a text you can just type in your text over here and just select this and press Control V to paste your link right over here. Once you're done with that in other situations you could actually set your colors and logos and things like that however we won't be dealing with any of that all we're going to do is hit create QR code. This will generate your QR code and then you can press this SVG and it'll automatically download as an SVG. Once you have it downloaded you can go ahead and open Blender. In your default scene the first thing that you have to do is go to edit preferences and search for SVG and you'll have an import export scalable vector graphics option that you have to have checked. Once you have that checked, you can go down here and click save preferences and close the add-ons tab and then press file import and you should have an SVG option over here. So you can select it and go to wherever you've stored your SVG and just select the SVG and click import SVG. Now you can't see it because it's behind the default cube. So let's select the default cube, press X and delete. Now this is your SVG. It's fairly small. So the first thing that we'll do is select all of it and then just press S maybe five to scale it by five units. And we don't require the back plate. So we'll select that and press delete to remove it. Now, another issue that I've faced is that if you actually select all of these and press shift, select any one of them and press control J, these boxes at the end end up getting deformed. And that happens when you have different curves that are overlapping and it doesn't really know how to join them together. So before you actually join these, you'll realize that there are overlapping curves for just these outer boxes. I don't quite know why, but it's occurring. So in the inside, if you actually select it properly, you'll see that there's just this square, which is absolutely unnecessary. So we press X and delete. So we can do the exact same for the other three squares as well. Just make sure that you don't have the outer box selected. You have just the inner square selected Press X delete and do the same for the last one as well. And then you should be able to select all of them. Shift select any one of them after selecting all of them and press control J and they'll all become one single unit. Once you're happy with that, you can go to object convert to mesh. And that way it's no longer a curve, but is a mesh. Then you can press object set origin to geometry so that it comes roughly to the center after which you can press alt G to bring it to the center of your scene. Then you can press tab to go into edit mode. And right now you see you have each face divided into two triangles. We want each face to remain as one square. So we're going to go to face select mode, select everything and press X and then search for dissolve faces. That way, all of them should become individual squares instead of triangles. Often the faces at these squares do not get dissolved and you might have to just reselect them and do it again. But in my situation, they've all been dissolved fairly nicely. Then you can select all of these and just change the pivot point from median point to individual origins and scale them down by a little bit if you want to do that. So just make sure that you have everything selected while scaling them down. For example, I don't have a few of the faces over here selected and we actually don't require these faces. They are duplicates. So I'll just press Control Z, switch on X-ray mode so that every face will get selected. Select them, X, dissolve faces. And now those duplicated faces should be removed and you should be able to scale them down on the individual origins by just a little bit. And I'm going to do this just to make it a little bit more stylistic. Of course, you don't have to do it. Once you're done with this, we have to actually scale them up by random amounts. And the best way to do that is using geometry nodes. So we'll increase our timeline a little bit, change it from the timeline to the geometry node editor and press new to add in a new geometry node tree. Now we'll press shift A and search for an extrude mesh node and just plug that in over there. And instantly you see how the extrusion is happening. So we'll switch off X-ray mode by toggling that button over here and it gets extruded by quite a bit. The first thing that we'll do is just reduce the offset scale or we can keep the offset scale at one and then press control A, apply scale. And that way it comes back down to just one unit. Once we've done that, we can press shift A and search for a noise texture to actually create the random heights and plug this color into the offset scale. Apart from which we can press shift A and search for a math node just to have some more variation and change this from add to multiply and increase the value so that the height actually increases by quite a bit. Now, if you look at it, this is essentially what your QR code looks like. And if you look at it from the top view, you should get the original QR code back if it's in the orthographic view, which you'd get by pressing seven. However, if we use an orthographic camera at all points of time, the 3D effect won't look too good. So we're actually going to play around with this value to convert it from this 3D look to the 2D scannable 
do our codes. So before we do the animation, we'll just press Shift A and search for a set material node and plug that in after the extrude mesh and choose the default material because we're not using that for anything else. Once we're done with that, we can set all of our defaults before we start the animation and texturing. So we'll go to our render properties, switch on ambient occlusion, and we'll just change the distance to like one and a factor to like two, which of course we might play around later on. And then go to the output properties, change the frame rate to 30 frames per second and frame I'm going to keep at 180 so that it's a six second long animation. Output frames can be wherever you want it to be. File format, I'm going to keep it at a FFmpeg video with an encoding. Container change to MPEG4 and output quality of perceptually lossless. Then we have to actually animate the camera going around this. So I'll select the camera, press Alt G to clear its location, Alt R to clear its rotation, then R X 90, then G Y to just bring it back a little bit and G Z to bring it up. Now you can press zero to go into the camera view. And I'm also going to go to camera settings down here and change the focal length down to something like 18, just so that that 3 effect comes out even more. And I'm going to go down to my viewport display and increase passport out all the way to one. Then I'll just take my camera and press G Y to zoom in even further and G Z to bring it down a little bit. And I think this looks perfectly all right. Then I'll press shift A and just search for an empty, which is going to be the controller for my camera. And once I've added in the empty, you can't see it because it's currently underneath this particular cube. So I'll press G Z and bring it up and then select my camera first and then shift select the empty and press control P set parent to object. Now I'm going to bring my cursor to the junction of these two windows, click and drag up to create a new window and I'll change it from the geometry node editor to the timeline and then I'll go back to frame zero or stay at frame one, select just the empty and press I location rotation scale. Then I'll go to somewhere around frame 120 where I will rotate it on the Z axis by 270 degrees and I will rotate it on the Y axis by 90 degrees and then I'll just grab it on maybe the X axis just to centralize my actual QR code and I'll grab it on the Z axis to just bring it down by a little bit and then press I location rotation scale. Maybe instead of 120, I'll keep this at 150 itself. So now you can just play the animation to see what it looks like and that looks fine. For what I'm trying to do. So I'm just going to go ahead and move on to the next part of this particular animation. And that is getting these to be scaled down to zero by the time this reaches this region. So at about frame 160, I want this value to go down to zero, but I want it to start reducing from frame 120 maybe. So at frame 120, I'll just hover over the value and press I and then go to 160, change the value down to zero and then press I. So now if I play the animation, you should see all of these crazy variations in height and as we get here the heights go down and it becomes a singular QR code that is scannable. So that looks great but we have to actually give it all of its materials. So let's switch our viewport display from solid to rendered. Go to the world properties and just change the background color all the way to white because we're going to use ambient occlusion it's best that we keep it at white to see the maximum ambient occlusion effect. Then to see the ambient occlusion it's best that we keep this object at white as well. So we don't require the light. Let's select this light and press delete and that just helps with all of these nice ambient occlusion shadows. However, we need some contrast with the background. So I'll just go out of my camera view, press shift A and search for a mesh UV sphere or an icosphere. I'll use an icosphere today. Then just select my icosphere and scale it up by pressing S, maybe 10 units. After which I'll go to the material properties, add in a new material for the icosphere. Just change the base color all the way to black and also make it very much metallic. So the black is actually black and I'll increase the roughness all the way to one, which should be enough for it to behave as an actual background. However, in case you do feel like you might be able to see some of the lines or anything, you can always just add in a subdivision surface by pressing Ctrl 5 and that way it'll be completely smooth. You'll also have to go to the modifiers and just increase the render to 5 as well. And I'll go to object, set shade smooth. And that way you have a black background with these nice sticks that are forming your QR code. And now we can play with the actual material of the QR code. So let's select it, give it the default material that we already selected in our geometry nodes and then play around with the actual metallicness and just see what works for you the best. You can always give it different textures and things like that to add to the animation. You could make it neon, sci-fi, just play around to your heart's content until you get exactly what you want. And once you're happy with it, the last thing that you have to do is press render animation. Hopefully you learned something from this video and hopefully you figured out the secret message and just 
had an escape from reality for a while. Be sure to comment down any questions that you may have or suggestions or whatever you please. These stylistic QR codes being created by AI is a huge trend right now and I thought why wait for artificial intelligence to create what you can do on Blender and this is just the first video to how you can enhance your QR codes. There's a lot more that you can actually do with QR codes such as adding in images to this itself and making them more or less scannable but looking pretty cool. We'll probably deal with that in a future video so be sure to stay tuned and check out other videos on my channel until that video comes out. So thank you so much for watching and don't forget to stay creative.